Good afternoon class. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So I wanted to complete one more example with you when we are calculating the resultant vector and direction of the resultant vector in a system of vectors using the component method. So on your assignment, this is question number five. And in this question, you're, you have three forces in your systems of forces. Force one is 480 newtons at 60 degrees with respect to the x-axis. And uh, then we have force two is 500 newtons with respect to the x-axis in a positive x-direction. And it is acting at 150 degrees. And force three is 160 newtons at 250 degrees with respect to the x-axis. Now, before we complete any vector resolution, what we need to do is go ahead and draw our table. Remember, on our table, we're always going to have three columns. The first column is going to be vector. Then we have x component and then y component. Let's go ahead and place a bottom double border. Let's go ahead and separate our column headings from our data in our table. So vector one is force one, vector two, we have force two, and then we have force three. And we're going to need to sum each column. So let's go ahead and place the capital Greek letter sigma here. So go ahead and draw your table there. Now, for force one, what we're going to do is break that down into its components, into its x and its y component. So we're first going to redraw the triangle. And remember, we're always going to use the reference angle. So we are, we are going to reference the closest x-axis. So for force one, the magnitude of the force is 480 newtons. We have an x component and we have a y component. And our reference angle is 60 degrees. So angle theta, 60 degrees. Okay? For our x component, we know that the x component is equal to the hypotenuse times cosine of the angle theta, and this angle theta is our reference angle. So what we have is 480 newtons times cosine of 60 degrees. So what let's do is let's get out your calculator. Your calculator needs to be in degree mode. So 480, and this is going to be a positive 480 newtons because we are moving in a positive x direction for force one. And you can see that in the diagram here. X is in a positive x direction. So 480 times cosine of 60 degrees is going to be 240 newtons. So right here, 240 newtons. So let's go ahead and put that value in the table. For the y component, we know that the y component is equal to the hypotenuse times sine of the angle theta. So for the y component, we are moving in a positive y direction. So we know that all of the y values in quadrant one are positive. So we have 480 newtons times sine of 60 degrees. This is equal to 415.7 newtons. Okay. All right, let's move on to vector number two. So we need to ask ourselves, do we have a reference angle? Well, we don't, okay? Our reference angle, the closest x-axis would be right here. 
Now we know half a rotation is equal to 180 degrees and this angle has rotated 150 degrees. So we know that 180 degrees minus 150 is equal to 30 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and redraw our triangle. We have 500 newtons. We have an X component and we have a Y component. And our reference angle here, angle theta, is 30 degrees. Okay? So we know that our X component is equal to the hypotenuse times cosine of our reference angle. So this is going to be 500 newtons times cosine of 30. Now before I calculate this, I do want to point out that we have to ask ourselves, are we moving in a positive or negative x direction? Okay, well, here's our origin of this vector. We are moving in a negative x direction. So we have to associate that direction right there. So negative 500 newtons times cosine 30. So on your calculator, this is going to give us negative 433 newtons. Let's go ahead and transfer your calculated value into your table here. And we have units of newtons there. Now for the y component, y is equal to the hypotenuse times sine of, a, of the angle theta, which is our reference angle. So our hypotenuse is 500 newtons, and we need to ask ourselves, are we moving in a positive y direction or a negative y direction? Well, we're moving in a positive y, so we will associate a plus sign with that, it's positive. So 500 newtons times sine of 30, 30 degrees, and so we know that sine of 30 is 1 half, 1 half times 500 newtons, my y component is equal to 250 newtons. We need to put that in our table here. Okay, now let's move on to force three. So we're going to redraw a triangle here. Let's take a look at force three. So starting here, remember counterclockwise rotation is positive, so we're rotating 250 degrees, but we passed the 180 degree mark. So we're looking for this angle right here. Boom, I'll call that star. So 250 degrees minus 180 degrees is going to give us 70 degrees. Now that is our reference angle, so we have an X component and a Y component. And remember, our reference angle is 70 degrees. The magnitude of our force is 160 newtons, okay? To calculate the x component, this is going to be hypotenuse times cosine of the angle theta. Now we need to ask ourselves, is this force being applied in a negative x direction or a positive x direction? So right here we are in quadrant number three. We know that x values are negative in quadrant three and we can even look at our diagram here that we've drawn and the arrowhead is pointing in a negative x direction. So we're going to have a negative 160 newtons times cosine of 70 degrees. And that gives me negative 54.7 newtons. Okay, let's go ahead and put that calculated value in our table. Let's take a look at 
the y value here, the y component, this is the hypotenuse times sine of the angle theta. Our hypotenuse is 160 newtons, but is this going in a positive or negative y direction? Well, we're going in a negative y direction, so negative 160 newtons times sine of 70 degrees. This gives me negative 150.4 newtons. Let's transfer this calculated value into the table. So negative 150.4 newtons. Now what we're going to do is sum the x component column and then sum the y component column. And this is going to give us our x and y components for our result. So in my x component column right here, we have 240 minus 433 minus 54.7 and that gives us negative 247.7 newtons. So our x component is going to be moving in the negative x direction. y component 415.7 plus 250 minus 150.4 this gives me 515.3. So we have a negative x value, but a positive y value. So that means we're going to have a resultant vector in the second quadrant. So what let's do is we are going to draw a right triangle So we're going to start at the origin. So we're going in a negative x direction here. Our arrowhead is pointed negative. And the magnitude is 247.7 newtons. Okay, we're going to use the head to tail method. We are going to place the tail of the second vector on the head of the first vector. And now we're going to move up positive y direction, 515.3 newtons. And we are going to draw our resultant from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. So there is our resultant vector. And we also need to draw our reference angle. So remember, our reference angle is the one that references the x-axis. And we have our right triangle here. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the magnitude of our resultant. So we have our resultant squared is equal to our x component squared plus our y component squared, okay? So our x component, 247.7 newtons, we're going to square that, plus y component, 515.3 newtons squared. So let's go ahead and square each of these values. So for my x component squared, I get 61,355 newtons squared. Remember, not only do we square the numerical value, we also square the unit value. Plus, so our 515.3 squared is equal to 265,534 newtons squared. Let's add these values together. And we can add them together because they have like units. So I get resultant squared is equal to 326,889 newtons squared. Now we're not finished here because we have to get rid of this squared value on the left-hand side of the equal sign. 
what we're going to do is square root both sides of the equal sign. And that is going to eliminate the square and the square root on the left-hand side of the equal sign. Now we're going to take the square root on the right-hand side. And remember, we're taking the square root of the numerical value and the unit value. So let's take the square root of 326,889. And this gives me a resultant of 571.7. Square root of Newton squared is Newtons. Okay? And we can go ahead and label this here. 571.7 Newtons. And on your assignment sheet, you have a place to write your answer. There's a box to write your answer. Go ahead and write resultant. 571.7. Please do not forget the units of Newtons. Okay? I'm going to erase this, and now we can calculate the angle of the resultant. So this is my reference angle. We're going to calculate this guy. So my base equation, tangent theta equals the y component divided by the x component. And so we know that theta is going to equal the arctangent of the y component divided by my x component. So y component is 515.3 newtons divided by 247.7 newtons. Okay? Now, just numerically, we can go ahead and make a prediction. Uh, we need to ask ourselves, is the angle theta for my reference angle going to be less than 45 degrees equal to 45 degrees or greater than 45 degrees? Well, we know it's going to be greater than 45 degrees because our ratio here is greater than 1. So if the angle theta is less than 45 degrees, this ratio will be less than 1. If this angle is equal to 45 degrees, the ratio here will be exactly 1, 1 1.0, because that means our x component and y component are the exact same. So angle theta will be 45 degrees. But when your ratio here is greater than 1, that means your y component is greater than your x component. So your angle theta will always be greater than 45 degrees. In addition to that, you can take a look at the right triangle you drew. Just visually, you can tell that the y component is greater than the x component. So angle theta will be greater than 45 degrees. And I point these two things out, uh, not to just add information here, but we need to do a reality check. We, you know, we're doing a lot of calculator work and we don't want to get lost in calculator land, okay? So arc tangent. Five hundred fifteen point three divided by two hundred forty seven point seven is going to give me sixty four point three degrees. So right here, sixty four point three degrees. All right, in your direction. Now we need to describe which, like if we're going north of north of west or north of east, something like that, because right now 64.3 degrees really doesn't mean that much because we don't know what it's with respect to. So looking at our picture here, our resultant is this, that is our resultant with this magnitude of 571.7 newtons. And our reference angle is 64.3 degrees. So our cardinal directions are written there for us. We have 64.3 degrees north of west. And we need to include that in our answer. So direction of our resultant, angle theta 64.3 degrees north of west.
I hope this example has helped you. Remember this is number five on your worksheet. If you have any questions, please give me a call or send me an email. I'll be more than happy to help you. I hope you have a wonderful day.